and welcome. I'm Melinda Akinami. Tonight, Federal High Court sitting in Lagos lifts order freezing $5.8 million belonging to the former First Lady, Patience Jonathan. Federal government pledges to ensure that all pensioners are paid their entitlements. Governor Nasser El Rufai of Kaduna State seeks regional economic intradation of states in Northwest as its second investment summit winds down. And Somalia's president gives Al Shabaab terrorists a deadline of 60 days to surrender or face an all out war. And on business news tonight, the House of Representatives announces plans to pass the 2017 budget after the Easter holidays. And in sports news, former world champions Brazil returned to the top of the FIFA ranking after a seven-year gap. And from Abuja, federal government rearranged former National Security Advisor Sambo Desugi at Abuja Federal High Court for illegal possession of firearms and money laundering. We begin with legal matters. A federal high court sitting in Lagos has lifted the order freezing the account of a former first lady, then Patience Jonathan. The account with Skybank PLC contains $5.8 million. In a related case, another federal high court fixed May the 8th to deliver judgment in an application seeking to unfreeze another account belonging to the former first lady. Our judiciary correspondent Shola Shoyeli has this report. Following an ex parte application by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission last year, a federal high court had frozen the account of a former first lady, Dame Patience Jonathan. The account contained the sum of $5.84 million, which the commission said is suspected to be proceeds of crime. The accounts of one Estalba and five companies allegedly used as fronts were also frozen. Displeased with the order, the former First Lady, through her lawyer, a senior advocate of Nigeria, Mr. Ifedayo Adedipe, challenged it on the grounds that Mrs. Jonathan was not named as a party in the suit, leading to the order freezing the accounts. Mr. Adedipe also contended that the suit was an abuse of court process, as the court had no jurisdiction to make an order against a person who was not listed as a party in a suit filed before it. The EFCC did not file any response to these issues, and so it was easy for the presiding judge, Justice Mojisola Olatoregun, to uphold the submission of Mr. Adedipe and lift the order freezing the accounts. In a swift reaction, however, the EFCC has filed a notice of appeal challenging the ruling. The commission contended that the court erred in law by setting aside the interim order of forfeiture. In another suit before Justice Mohamed Idris of the same court, the former First Lady challenged the freezing of another of our accounts containing the sum of $15.5 million. Her lawyer, Mr. Adedipe, blamed the EFCC for placing a no-debit order on the account of his client without a court order. He contended that this was contrary to Section 34 of the EFCC Act. In his reaction, the EFCC's lawyer, Mr. Rotimio Yedeku, said the commission is empowered by law to freeze an account for 72 hours without securing a court order. He urged the court to dismiss the application. Senior advocate of Nigeria, Michael Zekome, who represented some of the companies allegedly used to launder the money, challenged the EFCC to show that the money is indeed a proceed of crime. After listening to all these arguments, Justice Idris adjourned till May 8 for judgment. Shola Sheyeli, Channels Television News. Still on legal matters, a federal high court sitting in Lagos has ordered the final forfeiture of 1.83 billion naira traced to one Chukuka Onyekucha and his company Aquila Lizen Limited. The sum, which has been linked to a former chief of naval staff, is to be forfeited to the federal government of Nigeria. Justice Muslim Hassan gave the order today after holding that the EFCC, having complied with the Advanced Fee Fraud Act as well as the EFCC Act and the fact that the property is unclaimed, it was appropriate to make the order.
And away from legal matters, the Minister of Budget and National Planning, Senator Odoma Odoma, says government is committed to ensuring that every pensioner is paid their entitlement. The Minister gave this assurance while appearing before the House of Representatives, accompanied by the Minister of Finance, Kemi Adeoshu, and other heads of agencies in the country's pension sector. Our correspondent, Mary Lassisi, has this report. The Minister of Budget and National Planning, the Minister of Finance and members of their team making their way into the House of Representatives Chamber. They're here to brief the lawmakers on the steps being taken to tackle the pension liabilities of federal pensioners. The right on Addressing the House, the Minister of Budget and National Planning says the government is trying to reconcile its records and is determined to pay each pensioner their entitlement. We have to make sure that we, we calculate and we know exactly how many pensioners and how much is required. It is that reconciliation that has been the cause of, of, of the problem. But we must, every pensioner must be paid. And that is the directive. The minister says the a special committee has been set up on this matter repeated. and the committee is expected to come up with creative ways of meeting the funding needs of government. The minister of finance touched on action already being taken. Yesterday we released uh, the sum of 42 billion to clear all the arrears. Everything that has been appropriated up to date has now been paid. Um, I also would like to tell you that PATAD are completely up to date. The national president of the Nigerian Union of Pensioners appreciates the efforts of the federal government but cautions with a warning. And we want you to continue like that. You know, 1990, 2019 is coming. <laughs> we have thousands of votes. Rounding up the session, the speaker wants government to ensure that this pension issue is addressed once and for all. We will not ac accept any excuse that leaves part of these pension funds hanging. I don't know where we got the money to bail out the states from. Wherever we got that money from, that is where we're going to, to get the money to solve these problems. The ministers are expected to complete their work on the total figure needed to pay the pension arrears as soon as possible. They will then work with the National Assembly to ensure that the 2017 budget captures these figures. Lanre Lassese, Channels Television News. Promoting regional integration in the Northwest was the focus for today's closing ceremony of the Kaduna Investment Economic Summit. The host governor, Madam Nasir Erufai, told the gathering at the Murtala Square in Kaduna State that working together is key to achieving this objective. A session of the governors, moderated by Mr. Usman Bugaje, is the highlight of the closing ceremony, where the governors of Kaduna, Kanu, Zamfara and Jigawa aired their views on the summit. We realized very early, along with my colleagues, that unless we came together, all seven states of the Northwest, and we even brought in Niger State, which is not uh, in the Northwest, unless we collaborated together, we will not be able to address this issue holistically, because if we attack the bandits in one state, they will just cross over to another state. The deputy governor of Jigawa State says an integrated approach lends to speedy solutions and improved access to the seat of power. It will afford us the critical mass to engage the federal government on certain uh, 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 policy issues. A uh, very good example is uh, uh, the solar power industry. While a question and answer session follows, where the moribund textile industry and the charter to integrate the northwestern states is brought to the fore. When I intend to work with the Kaduna Textile in collaboration with the prostate government as a textile, they mentioned that one, the issue of energy is not sorted, there's no how they can be competitive. Two, if the dumping is not sorted, there's no how we can make a headway. So now the government has political will to improve the issue of energy. The first thing that we should do after signing the charter is to establish a commission 
an integration commission that will look into the structures that will be necessary for the social economic development of the region. The presence of the national chairman of the All Progressives Congress is recognized. He presents plaques to the recipients on behalf of CAD Invest, and he in turn is honored for his support. As the northwestern states draw investment to the area, the view is one of integration and regional cooperation towards marshalling resources for the benefits of the seven northwestern states in particular and Nigeria at large. We want to thank all of you. Queen's College will remain shut to all students except the junior secondary school who will only come in for their ongoing examination until water sources in the school become fit for human consumption. This was made known by the Minister of State for Health, Dr. Osage Ehanire, during an inspection tour of the school's water and other facilities. Dr. Ehanire, who was accompanied by the Lagos State Commissioner for Health and the school principal, said the gaps in the water supply source is being fixed to prevent any more deaths. So far, remedial activity is being undertaken, uh, repair work is being done, uh, and is being done by the Old Girls Association and the PTA, and I believe that uh, by the time these activities are closed and uh, various inspections have been done, health inspections particularly, the school can be reopened. But we are going to have lessons learned from here and see how we can replicate them in other places, not only in federal schools but also in all schools, recommendations that we've made to all proprietors. There are several gaps which we have identified which, shall, which we shall discuss and uh, we'll make a part of the report I'm going to um, write and what the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Education will uh, address together. Victims of the ethnic clash in the Sabo area of Ilefe, Ocean State, are still counting their losses after the crisis in their area. They are appealing to the government to assist them by providing shelters for those who have been displaced. This plea was made when a team from the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons visited the community. It's been over a month since the ethnic clash in the Sabo area of Ilefe in Ocean State happened. The clash left several dead, many injured, and living bitter memories for residents of the community. Peace may have returned to the community, but the signs of the clash still stares them in the face. Many have been displaced as a result of the crisis, and their cries have been attracting different donor agencies. This time, a team from the National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons are in Ileife to give relief materials to these victims. The first thing to do whenever there's a crisis is to make sure that at least the people can eat. There's, you know, some sort of, you know, immediate succor for them. And this is what has been given to them. Eventually, that durable solution will come into play. The wife of the owner of Ife also accompanied the team and she is appealing to the community to embrace peace. We continue to ask for peace because that's the only way we can move forward. We cannot pay back hearts with hearts. And the only way we should do is to also remember that we are brothers. If Ausa kills Yoruba and Yoruba kills Ausa, it doesn't help anyone. It's important that we all remember that we are one, and in unity, that's the only way we can progress. The beneficiaries are grateful, but they want more. We are begging federal government to come and help us, because this rain is now. Rain has started now. Eh? We don't know where, even most of our wife now, they are in the north. Eh? And then most of the house, most of the house we have in this sabo is a small place. Like one house, you can see 20 people, 30 people. Eh, please, our this is to federal government to come and help us. There is need for relevant authorities to take seriously the plea by those whose homes were burned to the mayhem to ensure that they are fully rehabilitated. 